Okay, guys, here we go. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. so at this point, uh, we're going to allow Scott to begin. <laughs> and again, <clears throat> just for those that will be reviewing this recording, it's uh, from the time of the, after the crusade, it's AD or CE that some may refer to. Mm -hmm. uh, AD through 1947. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, Scott. So, you know, as Chris was saying, a, a lot happened between AD and 1947. So uh, this is a little condensed, but there's still a lot of plot to it. Um, By the way, Scott, excuse me, and both Joe and Scott, yeah. since you guys are far away, this is recording. So if you can speak just a little bit louder so yeah. they can hear it, that'd be great. Of course. Yeah. Um, also, I emailed this to you last night. Uh, oh, cool. It took me a while to... to it, it's hard to put something together like this during the work week. <laughs> so oh, yeah. It took me a couple of attempts. Finally got it done last night, emailed it to you, tried to print it out so everybody had copies in my printer. Just no worries. Uh, I'm reading it off my phone. Yeah. All right. Uh, after the Assyrians invaded and destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel around 722 BC, the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem and destroyed the first temple in 516 BC. For the next several centuries, the land of modern day Israel had has been conquered and ruled by various groups, including the Persians, the Greeks, Romans, Arabs, Turks, Crusaders, Egyptians, Islamists, and others. So we start off with the Byzantine Empire. There's also a lot of really big words in this too. So if I butcher some stuff, maybe you can help cool. me. Out. <laughs> no words. I got the I right guy. I got the right guy next to me. Some of those great yeah, yeah. names. I'll do it. Right? I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Byzantine Empire was a vast and powerful civilization with origins that trace back to AD 330 when Roman Emperor Constantine dedicated a new Rome on the site of the ancient Greek colony of Byzantium. This city was called um, Constantinople, Constantinople. Constantinople, five years prior. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Constantine, five years prior, Constantine established Christianity as Rome's official religion. Although the western half of, Rome, of the Roman Empire fell in AD 476, the eastern half survived and thrived for another thousand years. Uh, the Council of Chalcedon in 451 established the divisions of the Christian world into four different patriarchates, including Rome, who would later call himself Pope. Um, it's also included Alexandria, Antioch, and Jerusalem. Even after the Islamic Empire absorbed uh, Alexandria, Antioch, and Jerusalem in the 17th century, the Byzantine Empire would remain the spiritual leader of the most uh, eastern cities. Uh, Justinian I ruled from 527 to 565 AD. During his reign, the empire included most of the land surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. The Byz uh, Byzantine Empire reigned supreme at this time, but its imperial army was spread too thin and would struggle to keep the territory. Uh, during the 7th and 8th centuries, attacks from the Persian Empire and Muslims, combined with political instability and economic regression, would threaten the empire. Uh, during the 8th and 9th centuries, Byzantine empire, em emperors uh, spearheaded a movement that denied the holiness of icons religious images, and prohibited their worship. Uh, this lasted until the year 843. Um, the end of the 11th century was also the beginning of the Crusades, the series of the series of holy war waged by European Christians against the Muslims in the Near East from uh, 1095 to 1291. Uh, Constantinople, Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it fell on May 29th, 1453. This marked the end of the Byzantine Empire era and the rise of the Ottoman uh, Empire. So, any questions? That's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. So, the Ottoman Empire was one of the mightiest and longest lasting dynasties in the world. Um, and Islamic run power ruled large areas of the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and North Africa for more than 600 years. The Ottoman Empire is led by a sultan. In 1453, after taking over Constantinople, Sultan Mehmed renamed the city Istanbul and made it the new capital of the Ottoman Empire. That was something I had no idea about. Mm -hmm. At the height of its peak, uh, at the height of its peak between 1520 and 1566, the Ottoman Empire included the following regions: uh, Turkey, Greece, Bulgaria, 
Egypt, Hungary, Macedonia, Romania, Jordan, Palestine, Lebanon, uh, Syria, and parts of Arabia. A total of 36 sultans ruled the Ottoman Empire between 1299 and 1922. Uh, I don't know. Do you know that word? Dev uh, yeah, that's Dev Shermi. Dev Shermi, okay. In the 14th century, uh, De the Dev Shermi system was created. This required conquered Christians to give up 20% of their male children to the state. The children were then forced to convert to Islam and become slaves. Um, in the start of the 1600s, the Ottoman Empire began to lose its economic and military dominance. Soon after the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, the empire began losing its key regions of land. By 1922, the title of Ottoman Sultan was eliminated. And this led to the Balfour Declaration. Uh, during the height of World War I in 1917, British Foreign Se Secretary Arthur James Balfour submitted a letter of intent supporting the establishment of a Jewish homeland in Palestine. The British government hoped that the formal declaration or the Balfour Declaration would encourage support for the Allies in the war. When the war ended in 1918, Allied, uh, in 1918 Allied victory, the 400-year Ottoman rule ended as well. And Great Britain took over control of uh, what became known as Palestine, modern-day Palestine, Jordan, and Israel. The Balfour Declaration and the British Mandate over Palestine uh, were approved by the League of Nations in 1922. <clears throat> Arabs opposed the declaration, concerned that a Jewish homeland would mean the subjugation of the Palestines. So they were just afraid of being under Jewish rule. Um, conflict between Jews and Arabs <clears throat> throughout Israel's long history. There's been tension between Jews and Arab Muslims. Both considered Jerusalem sacred. It contains the Temple Mount, which includes the holy sites Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Western Wall, and the Dome of the Rock. Uh, much of the conflict in recent years has centered around who is occupying Gaza, a piece of land between Egypt and modern-day Israel, Golan, uh, Golan Heights, a rocky plateau between Syria and modern-day Israel, and West Bank. It's a territory that divides part of Israel and Jordan. Um, the Zionism movement. In the late 19th century, an organized religious and political movement known as, the, known as Zionism emerged among the Jews. Uh, the Zionists wanted to reestablish a Jewish homeland in Palestine. Between 1882 and 1903, 35,000 Jews relocated to Palestine. Another 40,000 settled from 1904 to 1914. Uh, many Jews living in Europe and elsewhere, fearing the Nazi reign, found refuge in Palestine and embraced Zionism. Um, after the Holocaust, Zionists focused on creating an independent Jewish state. Uh, Arabs in Palestine despised the Zionism movement, and tension continued to rise between the Jews and the Arabs. And that led us to the Israeli independence. Uh, the United Nations approved a plan to um, partition Palestine into a Jewish and Arab state in 1947, um, but the Arabs rejected it. In May of 1948, <clears throat> this goes a little beyond, my apologies to whoever's got 1948 and beyond. Uh, in May of 1948, Israel was officially declared an independent state. David Ben-Gurion, head of the Jewish agency, was named the prime minister. Um, it was a historic event and appeared to be a huge win for the Jews, but it also marked the beginning of more and more violence between the Jews and the Arabs. Mm -hmm. Excellent. The Excellent end. summary. Yeah. yeah, this is a very, very good summary. A lot of content in there, a lot of content. So, uh, thanks for saying you sent me a document last night summarizing it. Yes. That, that'd be great because I'll I'll provide that to to all the men. Um, Joe, question for you. Uh, there was a point in time where uh, Palestine got its name. Are you going to cover that? Yep. Good. Sure. Thank you very much. Because that, there was not always Palestine. That Most people don't understand yeah. that. I've got a question too. Yeah. Historically, the Temple Mount was Jewish. When and how did the Muslims get to build the Dome of the Rock? <clears throat> What are the three sacred sites? 
Mm -hmm. I know it's important to them. Yeah. I just wonder how they got to move in on that. Well, they owned the land. I mean, they were the controlling power. They, they were, were given administrative control of the land. You're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So they took an opportunity. And it's a very sacred place for both. Yeah. yeah. And then you looked on, uh, I was looking up the Dome of the Rock, and the Jordanian army used it as a um, weapons depot mm -hmm. during this, during one conflict. So one can't help but wonder what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> what was, Excellent. What, were the, what was the span of the Ottoman Empire? You had the... Yeah. Um, the Ottoman... Yeah, all that's like the Turks. Turks, the Turks. It takes you know, seven okay. years. Yeah, the, it was they a long, ruled, pretty good span of time. Oh, sorry, I know. Uh, 400, yeah. 400 years with the Ottoman. Yeah. You know that whole thing where they take the firstborn? Mm. That's where... Um, Vlad the Impaler came from Dracula. Oh, is that right? Really? Yeah. yeah. He went. He went back and got trained, right? But he said he was going to get out, and then he said, "You know, I don't like what they did." He didn't convert to Islam, hmm. or if he did, he, he converted back. He yeah. never did really convert. So. Who was that? Then? Oh, the story of Dracula. Oh, okay. That the real, real <laughs> character. Who wrote it's about the name? Okay, I thought he was Hungarian or Gypsy or something. Yeah, or um, somewhere in the yeah, Slavic countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's, that, that's where they were. I wanted to suck your blood. Well, Scott, thank you for sharing that. Yes. And that summary is good. Any other questions for uh, Scott at this point before Joe begins to, to fill in? And then we'll open this up to dialogue once again. A lot of content there. I'll make certain that everyone gets the outline. That's <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Really be great. That was good so much. All right, so I'm going to uh, bring up real quickly uh, for the benefit here. Well, you know what? I'll just send the outlines to everybody. So let's just go ahead and go. Okay, I've got mine. Yeah, guys, I want to uh, take you through uh, some detail that'll augment what Scott's already shared. Maybe. Uh, re-emphasize some of it and so forth. But before we do that, I want to make sure that we remember that this is not a real estate conflict. This is not a war because somebody thinks somebody belongs to somebody else. A lot of people think that. But in reality, this is really uh, this is really about Jesus. This is God's redemptive plan unfolding in front of us. You cannot think about Israel without thinking about Jesus, because frankly, the Bible is about Israel. The, Bible, the whole Bible is about Jesus and about Israel. So let's keep our perspective and have a perspective to understand that this really is a ideological or a spiritual war. We're ultimately getting to the point where we're going to see um, the devil and Jesus duke it out. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of getting to that point where roots. uh, Anti-Semitism can be defined as Satanism. And so we're really starting to see some real powers at work here. And believe me, this is about as dead serious as it gets if you look at it from a biblical standpoint. So my comments are always through the lens of the Bible. I, that's the authoritative work for me. And uh, I think we, a lot of people think it's about land. Oh, you bet they do. You bet they do. Yeah, about you bet they do. Absolutely. Most people do. Because as we discussed last week, it kind of goes back to that original original issue between uh, Jacob and Ishmael and uh, you know Abraham Abraham's Abraham's yeah. son Abraham's sons and uh, so there's uh, a lot of people continue to make the argument that, that you know Ishmael was the first son consequently culturally deserves it but in reality God stepped in and said no the promise is going to go over here to Isaac and then to Jacob in fact if you recall biblically when Jacob had the dream and he had that wrestling match with God, mm -hmm. God changed his name to Israel. Yeah. That I'll tell you something right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh <clears throat> reality is that uh this is uh, this is an ideological spiritual uh, war in a way. Now I'm gonna tell you before I'm done where the name Palestine comes from, because that's that's important to understand yeah. that. Yeah. But just a, just as a recap to what Scott did such a great job laying out is the Jews were displaced, oppressed, and murdered from the time of their conquest in Babylon in 586 BC 
until they reclaimed their homeland in 1948. You just heard a great articulation of all the different mentioned. <laughs> Frankly, that's probably just the tip of the iceberg of all the battles and the conflicts and the struggles that Jews had trying to get to their homeland. Uh, they never gave it up, but they but they were chased all over the all over the world for that matter and dispersed. It really kind of started uh, between uh, the 66 and 70 AD. There was a Jewish revolt, and Emperor Titus destroyed the temple. You know how we've all learned that the temple was destroyed in AD 70. And if you go to Israel and you go to the, where that site is, you still see the the remnants, the rocks, and the, and the destruction of the temple. It's never been, it's never been cleaned up. It's still there. Yeah. So you can see something. It goes all the way back to 70 AD, right there on the ground. But the, the more important uh, differentiator. Uh, one thing I find interesting, I'm sorry to interrupt. You, no, that's okay. But you know, they, they talk about not one stone they left on another. Well, there was gold inside the Romans burned it. Yeah, yeah. So the gold melts down. Yeah. So to get all the gold, they tore all the rocks apart. That's I, I just find that that's right. Those tip is kind of interesting. Yes, so. exactly. Uh, a real definitive period was from 132 to 135 AD, and this was really the second Jewish rebellion. Uh, they were always fighting <laughs> for identity. They were always fighting for, for a place to call their homeland. They, they're, they're, they're fighters. Um, unfortunately, most of the population dies or flees uh, because Jerusalem was destroyed. Uh, <clears throat> The Roman emperor, and here's here's the guy that did the most damage. Yeah. The emperor Hadrian, H E D R I A N, Emperor Hadrian, he decided that he was going to absolutely stamp out the Jews. He was going to get rid of the people, he was going to get rid of the religion, he was going to get rid of all. Of them. That was his, his commitment. And so he started. Uh, well, he started with selling all the Jewish prisoners into slavery. He forbade the teaching of the Torah. They had destroyed all the Torah. The synagogues were replaced by Roman temples. And he changes the name of Jerusalem to Aelia Capitolina. And here's the big one. Here's the big one. He renamed the whole province to Syria, Palestina. That is Latin for Philistine. Absolutely. Latin for Philistine. Yeah. Here's the real key to this whole thing. Who were the arch enemies of the Jews? Who were their battle guys? The Philistines. Yeah. David and Goliath. Samson and Delilah. No, the Philistines yeah. were the arch enemies. So in an effort to completely humiliate the Jewish culture, yeah. this Roman emperor changes the name to Syria, Palestina, which really translates to Philistine. So that was the ultimate. And then from that point forward, it became Palestine. Yeah. And it was called Palestine. So Palestine's not a piece of land. Yeah. Palestine's a name. Yeah. Okay. And, and what's interesting is Jews and Arabs both were called Palestinians. In fact, up to 1948, if you were born either as an Arab or a Jew, and you had a birth certificate, it said Palestine. It didn't say Israel. It said Palestine. So that name stuck for all those years. And the reality is that Hadrian's efforts lasted. They lasted all the way to 1948 mm -hmm. when, when Israel finally reclaimed its land. And as Scott pointed out, you can only imagine when you think of all the people that were really from the Babylonians to the Greeks to, to the Palestine, you know, Palestinians, the Arabs, you know, e even through the Crusades, which by the way were the Roman Catholic Crusades. They were they they did as much damage as anybody can. So people ask you this question: why do Jews have a hard time with Christians? Well, how about the fact that for five or six hundred years the Christians terrorized the Jews? They killed them. They slaughtered them. They chased them out of their homeland. Why would a Jew trust a Christian? Yeah, Look well, what they did. Look what the Christians did. So, the Inquisition didn't help. Yeah. Well, no, no, that certainly didn't help. Yeah. So, you know, there's a whole lot of cultural things that, that the Jewish people feel that, that don't make sense to us because we weren't oppressed.
But the key to it was its name of Palestine. So when when people bring that up, you can share with them that, that Roman, the Roman Emperor Hadrian changed that name as an attempt to, frankly, insult the Jews and call them Palestinians, which was, I mean, call them Philistines, which mm -hmm. is the worst thing they could do. So what, what's happening today is all biblical. It's all prophecy. It's being fulfilled. We're watching biblical prophecy getting unpacked right before our very eyes on the, on the news every night in the war in Israel. And I guess what I would say, and you've heard this before, but what I would say is have your spiritual bags packed, guys. Mm. You know, make your peace with Jesus and your families and as leaders of our families. Uh, that's really probably something that we ought to really pay attention to. Um, the Turks and the Turkish people who are being oppressors of the Jewish people of well, the Ottoman Empire, okay? Here's something that's really interesting. When the British Commonwealth took over this land, as Scott referred to, and the Balfour Declaration was created, everybody agreed to this, but the Arabs didn't, okay? King Hussein was pretty upset about the Jews, like Scott said, having more territory than they had. Mm -hmm. So he went to Winston Churchill, who at the time was the Secretary of State, not the Prime Minister. And he convinced Winston Churchill to divide the land. So Winston Churchill just literally, almost like he took a crayon, just wrote, drove it right through the map. And split is what was originally declared by the Balfour Declaration to what the Jews have today, which is about 8,100 square miles. Remember, remember, if you look at the declaration that God made in the Abrahamic covenant as it relates to land, their original deed was 330,000 square miles, which included about half of Saudi Arabia. Well, now they're in 8,000 square miles, size of New Jersey. Okay. So um, the, the last final, uh, you know, reduction of their real estate came through Winston Churchill's work as a Secretary of State of Great Britain. And he basically reneged on the Balfour Declaration because he yielded to King Hussein, which, by the way, is Jordan. Right. Okay, they called it Trans Jordan at the time, right. but it has now become Jordan. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all we all know what that's all about, it's all about oil. So when we think about the Arabs and the Jews, the Jews were God's chosen people. They've been protected. They're a race of people. They delivered us the Savior. His name is Jesus. Okay, what did the Arabs get? Well, they got all the oil. Yeah. <laughs> Moses wanted for 40 years to find the only place where the Middle East that doesn't have no oil. Yes, right. <laughs> Interesting, huh? So that's a quick snapshot. Uh, I hope you guys have a perspective between what, what Scott shared and what I shared. The next step from 48 on is what's going to be uh, really interesting. So I guess Dave will share next week and, and maybe Chris will Jay. wrap it all up after. Jay that. and Dave. Oh, Jay, excuse me. Jay and Dave. Week, yeah. And then I'll uh, yeah. wrap up with yeah. everything. So, it's fascinating when you think about yeah. it. I mean, all the things that you said, and you know, what was the native language of the Jews in the Old Testament? What was it? the native language? Oh, the Hebrew. Hebrew. Yeah, it's Hebrew. What is the Hebrew. Hebrew. today? Yeah, Hebrew. 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 Okay. Conscious decision on their part is almost a dead language. When you think, yes, That's when, the when you you know, you think of people who's been scattered all over the world, all mm -hmm. over the globe, uh, having to blend in with other countries, communities, languages, having to adopt those languages and just become a melting pot. But somehow, somehow being able to retain their identity is yeah. Jewish. Somehow being able to retain their native language from thousands of years yep, ago. Kind of so, all that. Yeah. And somehow when you root through the Old Testament prophecy again, they re they regathered like that. Like a, like a mother hen brings back in one place, 1940 and beyond. This, boy, it's going to be so exciting next week to hear what you guys put together because of all the events that have 
Comes it's overwhelming. It, 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 it is overwhelming. It, it, it's, it's hard to keep track. Yeah, but, yeah. but just like, crack the lid on this. It's unbelievable. Just yeah. like with uh, Joe and, and yeah. Scott and uh, Tom, Ryder and Bill, uh, you guys are so bright. Be able to extract the information and share it, factually based. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Just like you did this morning. Here are the facts. Yeah, and you guys look into the, the Zionist movement. You know what was going on. I mean, that oh yeah, that seemed to really play. They start coming in, start buying the land. It's not like they came in and, and swiped it. And yes, that kind of heated up. The, yeah, yeah. There's a, the that, that's what's interesting about all this is there's so many subplots to this yeah. whole yeah. thing. But yeah. what Chris said is absolutely correct. The Jewish nation mm -hmm. is the only nation and culture in the world today that has never changed. Yeah. Language, belief system, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. It's never changed. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know this, but my wife is Jewish. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. She's a Christian. Yeah. So her you know her mom and, and brother. Wow. Uh, the other sister is not. But yeah. 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 I mean so it's pretty have that it's a, part culture. of my game, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, Jim. That's very, very special. Very, cool. very special. Well, I call it God's redemptive plan because um, <clears throat> the G if you study, if Dave kind of dedicated a second ago, you start unpacking this, and you're looking at a group of people that have never been normal. There is nothing. <laughs> That's, a great line. That's a great line. There is literally <laughs> nothing normal in their life. They have never had a moment of peace. Mm -hmm. They've never had, they've never had anything that they could call their own for any period of time without somebody disrupting. It. So mm -hmm. it's it, it, it's amazing how God has treated His chosen people, and uh, it's it, it's God's redemptive plan. We watch the Jews when we see ourselves. Yeah. It's amazing. The type of skill sets that people like that have a very unique how they stand out from all other people groups. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about Nobel Prize winners, we've talked about what, um, but even <clears throat> you know, there are factual so many stories of where you know great businessmen throughout throughout time uh, have been able to identify you know yeah. uh, uh, Jewish um, men. Uh, to help them run their businesses over time because of their fi financial acumen, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I grew up in a household where good good uh, diplomacy and value was called Jew Jewing somebody down. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Jewing yeah. them down. Yeah. 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 One of the things from yeah. a historical perspective that doesn't get a lot of press about the Jews is when George Washington was fighting in the Revolutionary War, he ran out of money. And there was a Jewish man, he was a Jewish banker in New York, mm -hmm. that financed the war. And you don't hear about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it had it not been for that contribution, we may not be where we are today. So it's significant, very yeah. significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't hear much about it because the Jewish people are humble people and they don't need to make a lot of noise. They know what they did. Yeah. But literally, if you look at the French or the, or the British invasion to the George Washington fight. Yeah. The Jews backed it. Yeah. Think yeah. back about in, in Europe. I get to think on it. Uh, the, the importance of tradition and rituals in the Jewish religion has really kept them going, right? Yeah. Big, big factor in it anyway. And one of the things was the way they lived. They weren't getting some of the diseases that their surrounding Europeans were getting. And the Europeans said, we're getting a little ticked about that whole thing. and said, it must be black magic. And they told Sorry, uh, picking on the, the Jews. Well, I think what happens, uh, kind of as a re to the echo of your comment, Ken, I think I think what's happened is the world decided a long time ago the Jews were the people we're going to pick on. <clears throat> Period. They were oppressed and for mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of years. Well, even God got mad at them and, and because they disobeyed and, and, and put them in exile for 400 years. Come well, on. Even God got tired of them. Okay, yeah. So you yeah. know, yeah. got tired of their disobedience. So oh, it's just the remnant. Yeah. yeah. It seems it seems like they're either 
highly persecuted, mm -hmm. or else God works a miracle and brings them out of disaster. Yeah, exactly. So you, it's, it's nothing down the middle. It's always yeah, God's, right. God's sovereign hand is yeah. going one way or the other. You got it. Yeah. There's a cycle, Dave. There's actually a cycle where you can see it in biblical history how the, the Jews they apologize, they get redeemed, they apologize, and then pretty soon they start sinning again, and then they come back around, and then and they and, and they have all kinds of problems, and then they go to God again, and He redeems yeah, them, yeah. and they come back, and it's a cycle that repeats itself so throughout, the <laughs> throughout, the Old, throughout the Old Testament. Very interesting to watch it. Yeah, it's it the same yeah. cycle every yeah. single time. That's right. So it's good for us to see that because yeah. we do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, of course, we yeah. learn. By the way, one of the big learnings from that <clears throat> is, um, you know, one of the key responsibilities that we have, and how it relates to us as men as grandfathers and as fathers is to make certain that we don't make the same mistakes that they did of not teaching the next generation of yeah. follow yeah. what God did. And that didn't happen. You know, yeah. uh, just like you said, God came in, listened to him, he rescued them, mm -hmm. but it was the following generations that began to once again, dabble in sin, open things up a little bit. And before you know it, they were right back into that same spot again. That's why it's so, so important for us to be very intentional about uh, not only being a role model for our children and grandchildren, but also making sure that we convey the foundation, the things that we've learned, the things that we've observed. And what God God will is not only just for us and for, for, for us as mankind, but for them as well. I make it very, very clear. If we don't do that, we'll lose. As a matter of fact, when you think about the generation today, that's the this the current young generation, in terms of the sometimes we refer to as unchurched, it's grown significant. Now, why is that? <clears throat> why is it? Lots of reasons for it, but you know, it it um, generation, 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 and if those of us who are you know we're in the third quarter and going to, in the fourth quarter. Some of us are already okay, but we have a responsibility, and the the uh, the Jewish people did not always do that in the Old Testament. It didn't didn't happen. It didn't translate. So generations were lost, mm -hmm. and uh, the stakes are high. You know, one one of the things we've all observed, mm -hmm. certainly recently, if not for many months, is the level of. Um, protests going on at college campuses and other places by the young people, millennials. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a very interesting presentation about this issue, and I learned something I'm going to share with you. It's very, very interesting. Um, sociologists and psychologists have looked at this generation that Chris is talking to very, very carefully, and what they've determined is that they have a high disproportionately high objective to feel good. Mm -hmm. Simply to feel good. They like to feel good. Mm -hmm. And when they don't feel good or they don't think people are being treated fairly, they uh, they get excited about it because they think everybody needs to be treated. I honestly believe this goes back to the everybody gets a trophy idea mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and what they did in the schools. Mm -hmm. But here's what, they, what they've come up with. I think it's pretty interesting. It's frankly a psychological condition. And it's called moralistic therapeutic deism. Okay. Moralistic, I'm doing the right thing. This is the moral thing to do. Yeah. Therapeutic, when I'm good, it makes me feel good. Deism, it's so I am so obsessed that it's like a religion. Moralistic, therapeutic deism. And what they've identified is this is so prevalent. Yeah. As a as a as a power source yeah. that it rationalizes all of this this behavior is I'm 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 okay because I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. Without any real knowledge of the facts. That's the pro that's the, the downside to the problem is yeah. the behavior goes into effect without a solid re reason to do it, other than it makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're wired a certain way, Joe, human beings, and uh, often people refer to what you're saying as a new, as a new religion. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> you know, they've taken the the precepts of Christianity, Jesus Christ is our Savior, mm -hmm. and they've locked on these other social issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've become. Um, we can put the right word here. <clears throat> just committed. Committed. Well, to carry to carry that that through and be engaged and we see that being played out sure. in the streets every day. Well, you got to thread the needle with your kids. I mean, there's, it's absolutely great to care about other people. I mean, that's that's a characteristic that we want to grow. But when you take it to the extent to where you just jump on that bandwagon because it makes you feel good, then then you've got a different you got a different set of circumstances. Yeah. yeah. You know, the thing is, in this whole conversation. I'm thinking, you know, there's the father of this world who's the great deceiver, the liar. Well, all of this stuff that you're talking about, yeah, its core is deception. Yeah. Right. And he's yep. very crafty. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. And he knows that people like to feel good. Sure. Right. And so it works because he gets what he wants. And um he's pulling people away from God, right? And that's, but I think, where the Jews have been oppressed forever, too, because Satan, he doesn't he doesn't want the Jews to succeed in any way, shape, or form, right? And so yeah. he's, you know, they've been a special case for him, Yeah, you know? Yeah. To make sure that they stay oppressed. Particularly, you're so well, Jay. Yep. You, did, you did a great job on that. Yep. But you're right. I mean, uh, and I go back to what Joe said earlier. This is a spiritual, this is spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many attempts uh, great leaders or politicians can make to try to bring the groups together uh, and, you know, having two different homelands and everything else. It's never going to work. No, there's no it's, two things. Know, right. It's just not, it's never going to work. This is, this is right. different. Most people don't understand it. No. Um, and they think, you know, by the Palestinians having their own homeland, that that's going to resolve things. It'll never resolve things. No. It's a deep, no. deep hatred. No, it's much deeper. Yeah. It's a deep hatred. And until the Jews are just exterminated. The gone. Jews have offered it four or five times. <clears throat> they have. But the Palestinians have rejected it every time because they want to eliminate it. They don't want to. There is no. You're right. It's yeah. not. There's, there's, there's no long-term solution to this. Thing. So it's that spiritual. Who's the force behind the spiritual warfare right now? This is just said, it's Satan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we know that Israel is God's protected chosen people. I love Joe's comment earlier. It's a there's a redemptive plan <laughs> under under work. It's uh it's underway. Um the majority of Jews who live in Israel are, are not believers. We know that. But there will come a time, and it's all prophesied where that will come about. Yeah. Let me read you something real quick to just give you some idea how this is institutionalized. Um, the Hamas group was really created in the 70s, 60s and 70s, but they really established their what they call the Hamas Covenant in 1988. And I'm just going to read you two sentences. Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it obliterated others before it. That's the opening paragraph of their covenant. Section 7 of the covenant says, the day of judgment would not come until the Muslims fight and kill the Jews. So That's this is not about real estate. This is about wiping out a race of people, okay, from the Hamas point of view and from the Iranians point of view. Joe, could you send that to me, please? Sure, be happy to. Thanks. Thanks. Absolutely. That's 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 no, so we're talking That's about it. Just, they just, got it right. Okay. That's why dividing Israel up I mean. Yeah, that's no, why. It's, 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 that's my point. It, going a Tuesday solution won't work. Yeah. No, no. Right after May 14th, 1948, days. Yeah, um, two days, two or three days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and the numbers, when you look at when you look at the numbers of Jordan, Egypt, Syria, all the, the Arab countries, the numbers against the numbers that were in Israel to fight and defend their country, it was not even, it was not even close. No, no. It was so significantly different. 
So whether it was then or 1967 or 1973, and you, 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 the numbers are just overwhelming. Um, but the outcome is it's it's consistent where they always come out on top. And not only are they able to stave off the attacks, but they end up taking land. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and they get land back. That's exactly right. They take land back. back. They take land back. Take land yeah. back. I will say, I remember funny things remember from undergrad. I took a politics course. I said, uh, first one I was waiting to point out if a country is attacked and defend themselves and in the process push the borders back legally, that is their land. Yeah. Yep. Legally, yeah. international law. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would it. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> <makes sense. clears throat> well, this is going to be interesting <clears throat> what Jay and, uh, and Dave take on because, yeah. you know, <clears throat> every time. The Jews took back uh, land after these wars that occurred during the time period that they're going to cover. Uh, in some periods, as recent within the last 20 years, within the last 30 years, they were forced to give it back against the will of the Jewish people living, whether it was in the Gaza, Gaza Strip in that area, the West Bank. But decisions were made to give the land back with an expectation that peace would follow okay. every single time. And I can't think of the uh, Jewish leader's name right now, who were, who were the prime ministers in, in power at that time. But the decision was made, and they went ahead and they executed it. Yep. And the, here we are today. Here we are today. Right back again. Well, it's never going to change. How many times? Huh? How many times? Seven. 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 Yeah, half a dozen Seven. times. Well, look what's going on now in, in the Gaza Strip. You know, West Bank hasn't risen up yet. I guess tensions are rising. There may something maybe, but, but anyway, in the Gaza Strip, even Egypt shuts them off. Yeah, that's right. Well, they're yeah. trying to say we don't want these characters. No, no there are two and a half million people that want to come into Egypt. Egypt's so fragile already with its infrastructure. Yeah. It can't take two and a half million more people. I mean, you know. Everybody knows, even yeah. the Arab nations oh, know yeah. that these guys in the Gaza Strip. Not good. They don't, they don't want them. them. They don't want them. Because as long as they can keep them there, you know, they, they look at it as an abandoning if they take them. If they take the peoples, whether it's in Jordan or Egypt or the other countries and absorb them. Well, look what happened when Jordan tried to take Palestinians in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. there was a revolt. Uh, they nearly lost. Jordan nearly lost to the Palestinians today. Yeah. 60, 67. Uh, 67 right after. Yeah, right after. I have to ask a really stupid question. The people that reside in the Gaza area, are they all Arab? Are they a portion Jew? Oh, there's some Jews in there. There's yeah. There. Jews there. yeah, there's some Jews. In fact, the irony of the whole thing, Jay, is the Jews and the Arabs have coexisted very peaceably for many, many decades and centuries. Before 1948, it exactly. was pretty quiet harmony. Absolutely. They, all got they got along great. Right. They, sure. sure. they had that problem. And then you had these groups come in, these terrorist groups, Hamas, Hezbollah, and those groups who decided that they didn't like that peace and quiet. And, and Iran. Yeah, Iran, of course. Yeah, big, so, yeah. Big deal. Oh, there's a lot of them. <clears throat> yeah. If they're smarter, they'll get the heck out of there. But, uh, anyway. yeah. Well, we're starting to see, we're starting to see the beginning. Well, I think. This is just my opinion. I think we're seeing the beginning of the end, but but uh, Ezekiel 38 is something you might want to plug into Ezekiel yeah. 38, 39, which is which is kind of a <clears throat> kind of a snapshot of what's probably the next step. Yeah. And uh yeah. yeah. So of all the things that have to happen before Jesus comes back, mm -hmm. I was under the impression that everything has been satisfied scripturally. Not Is yet. that true? Is it not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Yeah, you'll you'll probably cover that. The third temple, I think it is. Yeah, that has to be built. Um, but everything else leading up to this point, um, and I don't want to steal any thunder, but there's already some, you know, some things developing to move in that direction for that <laughs> third temple. But I'll let let the you guys. Do the research and cover that, but it's very close. It's moving in that, in that okay. direction. All the other things. All the thing supplies. that really kicked it off is when the Jews were came together in 1948. That really opened up. Uh, well, they got their homeland. A lot of they got their homeland back. 
we know they became, a, they became a group yeah and not yeah. all their homeland based on what you said right well it's they like, got not all their no homeland, oh no they, they, they were going to all those no. in no, fact miles. king david didn't even have all of it when, when he was running the place yeah. oh, no. yeah. uh, but never... that was really the the uh oh. the kickstarter to to move where we're at today yeah yep. and so you know oh, yeah. all the hatred the nations you need Yep. Yeah, again, when you read through Ezekiel 38, 39, and some other Old Testament passages, it references areas of the world. They had different names back then. You translate those names to the names today, and it's Syria. It's yeah. Jordan. It, it, it's. I sent you that out last week. Uh, hang on a second. Let me confirm what Chris just said. It's a big deal. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay, Edomites and yep. Israelites, that's Jordan and Arabia. Yep. The Moab and the Hadrides is central and north Jordan. Jerbal, Ammon, and Amalek are Lebanon, Syria, and the Sinai Pen Peninsula. Philistia mm -hmm. is Gaza Strip, Philistines, Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. Tyre, T-Y-R-E, is Lebanon. Yep. And Assyria is Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq. <clears throat> so you take those biblical names, that's the territories today. Yeah. 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 And I said that out last week, so he won't reference. Well, I think it's been curious uh, to me is they, they talk about Gog and they like they figure Rut is, is part of this. Yeah. And the, 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 the argument against it has been that Russia and Iran have always been at, at odds with each other. Not until now. Well, we're having a death recently. <clears throat> well, War makes strange bento. <laughs> well, yeah. the, the major this is kind of your point. Regardless of what needs to occur, what's left in it to occur, what 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 really has to occur is all the nations of the world have to go against Israel. Yeah, that's that's the real trigger. <clears throat> and if and at this point, we're the United States is still supporting Israel. Yeah, so okay. far, so far, and so, so is Britain, <clears throat> and so is a few other fights. So, so okay. it's interesting you say yeah. that because uh, a couple of things. Number one is. You know, uh, I, I really have been hopeful and praying that, you know, Russia, uh, this whole Ukraine conflict would be a completely forced back out of the country and change would would occur within that. And frankly, that they'd be defeated. OK. Uh, but as I thought about it, the Gog, Magog deal, everything else, they won't be defeated because they have a very strong position in the end. So they're going to be there. And just something to think about. With respect to our president, uh, you know, I think they're beginning to recognize that from a political perspective, uh, the election is still a year away. But this is not good for them, okay, because of the strong position they've taken. We've seen a little crack a couple of days ago when we said maybe we ought to pause this. Yeah. Thing. And uh, boy, I tell you, if the U.S. ever turned its back on Do not pause. No. Uh, that would be so horrible. But we'll see how things play out. I, I, I really think the risk we have, just to further your yeah. point, Chris, I think the risk we have is, is uh, with our help, the Americans help the Ukraine, and what mm -hmm. could be Taiwan, China, mm -hmm. which will require some help, and what we're currently doing we're liable to run out of resources. Yeah. Particularly if you factor in the other element that we all fear, and that's that in this 10 million people that will come across the southern border. Yeah. That there's a, a bunch of Hamas and Hezbollah terrorists yeah. in those groups. Yeah. So we could have terrorism in the United States that we have to defend. Yeah. So literally, as hard as it is to think of it this way, yeah. the United States could be uh, in a position to where it's going to have to say to Israel, sorry, guys, we got to take care of the fires at home. We can't help anymore. Yeah. And guess what? I Maybe think that's... Really, I think we're really close to that. Well, I think we are too, Bill. I think we're very close to it. Yeah. And I think that's the point where all of a sudden you see the United States back out. Now, all of a sudden, we're what Ezekiel 38 says. Nobody is helping Israel. Mm. 
Something to think about. Something to think yeah, about, guys. Uh, Something to pray about. <laughs> there's no unlimited. There's no unlimited resources. No. There's no. a finite number. Anyway, a lot of stuff here, guys. This is really, really good. It's we're at the end of our time. Yeah. Um, but a, a lot of things to think about. I'll make sure. Uh, I sent Joe's outline out last night. I'll send Scott's out as well. Yeah. Um, and then again, all of this will be condensed uh, when we're complete. But good discussion today. Um, if you're interested, uh, Pastor Brett Mater of AT Creek does a prophecy update the first Friday of every month. We'll be doing it this evening. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be on his review. It'll be a good one. It'll yeah. be a good one. It'll be online. Be oh, like... yeah. It's online. Okay. Oh, yeah. He does it online. I, I try to catch every single one. I do too. And they're very, very they're insightful. Very good. It's yeah, a great he's job. He's got a good feed on things. <clears throat> well, they're good because they're biblically based. So, they're, yes. you know, they're great. Right. All Not a name. bunch of opinions. Good, good, good stuff. Who does that? Brett Mayer of AD Creek. AD Creek. AD Creek. So I'm going to turn off this uh, recording right now, guys. All right. We will. Uh, yeah. Bear with me for a minute. Let's see here. I was listening to a uh, <laughs> surprisingly lack of.